good afternoon everyone uh welcome back we are in our sixth installment of my sketchbook project and i hope you guys are really liking these i'm having a blast making them um today i'm gonna do a little bit uh, faster video today uh at work we're doing uh something called physical inventory so i don't have as much time to uh, devote to like editing and stuff this week but uh i do have plenty of time to cry myself to sleep because I'm tired. I'm real tired. <sighs> anyway, uh, I apologize also if this looks weird or sounds a little bit weird. Uh, I'm having to use different recording equipment because my uh, the battery in the camera that I've been using is, is dead. I really don't have the time to charge it and then set up again and then do all this stuff. Uh, I have another camera <clears throat> that I just got that um, is I have no idea how to use it. it's been it's been like seven years probably closer to eight years since I've used like a, an honest to goodness real DSLR camera and um, I don't remember how to use it correctly uh, so I might start using that to record portions of the videos just a couple of announcements uh, one it's September so happy September uh, two, uh, it's almost October. Happy almost October. And, uh, uh, three, so every year me and my brother do a Halloween comic book that should be coming out, uh, sometime in, um, uh, October. I'm not going to promise you a date, but sometime in October it's going to come out and, uh, I'll be, uh, kind of showing it off here on this channel and, and, and you guys can take a look at it. Um, my brother is a fantastic colorist. I am a competent goose. I'm 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 pretty good with lines. Uh, I like uh, I like doing um, ink work. Uh, I'm a competent inker. So I, I really like the way this book looks. Um, let me know if uh, in the future you'd kind of like to see. Um, those pages that I inked and stuff like that, I'll, I'll do like a little bit of a uh, promotion for it here. So that way you guys can see what it is. If you guys want to check into to ordering one, feel free to. But anyway, uh, I'll get into the, the time lapse now. I'm not going to do the good luck Godspeed yet. That's, that's in the voiceover. I'll see you guys. All right. All right. I'll see you guys later. So I apologize for the, uh, the way my eyes look and that I know I'm also a little bit incoherent and it looks a little bit like I poured battery acid in my eyes. I promise you I didn't, uh, but uh, it, was, it was early, I had just gotten up and uh, it was really the only time I had to film. I don't remember entirely what I was thinking. Uh, uh, all I remember was uh, I kept thinking like, uh, I, gotta, I gotta make a video and uh, I got class and, I gotta, and, 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 and most of it was incoherent and most of it was inaudible um, so <laughs> I did the best I could I think I shot for like 10 minutes or something like that only about three and a half minutes were usable um, so that's uh, that's why I have uh, a weird beginning to this video but uh, anyway Let's let's move on, shall we, to more successful aspects of my uh, creative endeavors. So uh, this week I, I I'm I'm going into a new uh, section of this sketchbook. This is the next five paintings will be based on songs from a band called The National. The National is an incredible band. They are sort of a rock band. If you don't know what yacht rock is, you're you're, you're probably uh, confused by the term. Um, but it is it's one of those uh, things where you kind of have to hear it, and then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I can see that. They're a fantastic band, but uh, I want to talk about the the song that this painting is based off of. So the name of the song is "Terrible Love," which is a rather straightforward uh, title, um, which I'm sure you saw in the thumbnail, but 
this is going to deviate from my normal um, message about uh, about letting go of things and, and, and coming to terms with stuff. Um, and this is actually going to be a little bit different. It's a, kind of the same uh, background story. To paint you a little bit of a picture uh, of that time period for me, probably a week before this album came out, I had just gone through a breakup um, that I didn't understand or know why uh, it didn't it didn't work out like I, I I was I was very confused at the time and I felt you know very dismayed and 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 generally you know, heartbroken and and forever changed uh, I guess is the best way to put it this was my first relationship uh, and those always kind of hit the hardest um, from what I understand so uh, whenever that fell through uh, I, I didn't know. I didn't really know what to do with myself. Um, I had hinged quite a bit of my my ideas about who I was based on who I was in context of that relationship, uh, not just romantically, but just personally. I remember driving home from, it was Best Buy actually. I, was, I went to school, I went to Best Buy because I had heard that this album had just come out. Um, I guess it would have to be like a Tuesday, I think that's when new albums come out, uh, but I, I was driving home, and I remember putting the CD in, and the first song comes on, and the first song is, is Terrible Love, and I hear the the rhythmic guitar kick in with a little bit of distortion, um, and I hear the singer start to repeat these words, um, it's a terrible love, and I'm walking with spiders. It's a terrible love that I'm walking in. And he just kind of repeats that over and over again. And I found it, you know, very meaningful. The The imagery of that song is, is really what started to, to kind of grip my attention. And, and so I started listening to this song. And by the time he gets to... There's another part of the song where he starts to say, um, But I won't follow you into the rabbit hole. I said I would, but then I saw your shivered bones. They didn't want me to. So that's, you know, that's a line expressing, uh, like, this sort of rejection, but it, it's it's this, it's a line that describes this sort of epiphany of, you don't want me around, you know, that that, that sort of feeling of, like, oh, I'm, I'm not a part of this anymore. And that line destroyed me. I had never felt such an impact from words, from a song the very first time I heard it. I'll admit that I, I can be, you know, a little um, emotional. I think I have, I think my sense of humor, and I think th this is true for most people, like your sense of humor is a, a defense mechanism, right? Like whenever you've been exposed to uh, like raw emotion before and, and you're not good with coping with it, you develop uh, coping mechanisms that are not always healthy, but you know, sometimes entertaining. Um, and I definitely, you know, that's that's what that's what humor is for me. And I never knew that I could feel that level of exposure, that that level of like like this this mirror was being held up to to me, and and I actually heard my own ineffable feelings coming from someone else. And I started to cry. Uh, I never, I never cried for a song like that before like and, and it wasn't just like this like single tear I just started to break and so when I say it destroyed me I mean it destroyed me it it, it broke me down and then by the end of the song he says uh, it takes an ocean not to break and I'll, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this but I, I will still admit it I, I didn't quite understand what he meant when he said that you know it, it wasn't until like much much later I realized oh he's talking about alcohol he means he gets drunk in order to not feel sad about it um, in order to not break down or, or, or whatever about it and uh, personally you know I don't drink or, or, or do drugs or, or smoke or anything I'm, I'm real exciting that way but um, I do I understand the need for uh, diving into something just to not be around your haunting thoughts. Uh, so for me, the ocean that he spoke of uh, is represented here by paint. 
It's represented by watercolor. It's represented by creation of things as a cathartic release, uh, as a, uh, a way to, as healthily as I can do it, uh, talk about the biggest, uh, what left the biggest scars in my life. And this particular painting even is kind of a, I guess, a realization of why it is that uh, I make so many paintings about, you know, letting go or, or, or trying to process information that I just don't understand. In a lot of ways, uh, painting, being creative in, in any aspect is like learning to speak. It's learning how to express yourself in a new language. You know, gouache is not my my forte. It was never my, you know, my go-to, but this is certainly one of my favorite paintings that I have ever done in my entire career as a uh, as a painter. And I think it's because it it is technically fine. I think it does what it's supposed to, but it's I think it's capturing more of what I intended uh, conceptually. It's me sort of morosely holding a glass of uh, paint or, or watercolor water and um, with a paintbrush in it with a, with a spider there. And um, in the song he mentions, you know, uh, it's a terrible love uh, and I'm walking with spiders. And I think that spider is actually meant to feel more like, it kind of evokes this, this feeling of being in a house where there's cobwebs and there's really only spiders. And you see that house as abandoned or just kind of left uh, to rot, and that's kind of the the feeling I think that he's that he's implying here. On that cheery note, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, and move on a little bit to the, the technical stuff of this painting. This is, like I said, I think this is one of my more successful paintings, um, not just for the uh, the technical aspects of you know it, it kind of looks like me. I think it it, uh, it it came along just fine. Um, you know, thanks to some reference photos and, and some experience with, with gouache. I think, I think I'm finally starting to get the hang of gouache. You know, my, my first few paintings uh, uh, with gouache just came out muddy, and I just, I didn't understand how to use it to speak. Uh, and that's kind of what I was talking about. Is like, you, you use uh, mediums, you use new creative outlets as, you know, new languages. You, you have to learn how to talk through them to communicate how you feel through these things. And uh, yeah, for me, I am becoming more fluent in gouache. And uh, I think it shows uh, okay in this, uh, in this painting. But anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for hanging out. And I appreciate uh, everybody who's been uh, supporting the channel. Um, don't forget to like share, subscribe, comment. So this week, my question is, you know what, I'm gonna end it on a, uh, on a slightly sillier note. How about that? We'll, uh, we'll lighten things up a little bit. For $500,000, would you fight a shark the size of Jaws, the, the movie shark, in an Olympic-sized swimming pool with only a pocket knife and gusto. Let me know in the comments what you would do. If it's yes, I need to know your strategy for beating that shark. If it's no, change your answer to yes and then tell me how you plan on beating that shark. All right. Um, uh, thanks for watching again. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Until that day, good luck. Godspeed.